Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. I had a little bit of a tough time figuring out certain things in this new install. Uh, I've hit a few snags here. First of all, uh, last time I used this Ranger uh, core and it worked fine. But some of these others uh, don't have the remote tech set up properly for reasons that seem to be different from the original reason I had in the previous in the previous uh, version, you know, uh, 23.5. I did have one that had uh, local control, even though it shouldn't have. But I don't think this is the same reason. I'm I'm still I still have to check. And so right now, this is the only only probe core that I'm certain works properly with remote tech. So uh, we've got that problem. I've had to. Uh, the fuel tanks, the procedural fuel tanks are limited based on what technology you have. They In career mode, you can't stretch them infinitely. I've changed that, so for instance, uh, this uh, real fuels tank uh, can go to enormous sizes because uh, based on the way it's limited, it's not really feasible. Well, I mean, we've already gotten past that point in this series. Uh, the limit was more or less like uh, 1.25 meters uh, in diameter, which isn't going to get us anywhere and would set us back to basically where we were at the beginning. So that wasn't uh, good. Um, no, not that one. Uh, another problem, well, of course, if the fuel tanks are limited, maybe you can guess that the... Uh, which one is the... Pr uh, I'm looking for... Okay, so this is the procedural one okay so this is also limited but I haven't changed it yet so as you can see I can't scale it to more than 1.75 meters and the length that much so it also has a as a limit on the volume so I'm debating whether to change that or not uh, for this episode we won't have to but another annoyance is the way the the nozzle changes based on how much thrust it has I I don't really like that. Um, <laughs> uh, for most part, for the most part, it works okay. Uh, but for some things, it really doesn't. I mean, for instance, most of your uh, SRBs govern for about a minute, probably. Uh, that's a pretty standard, and you're gonna end up with this tiny nose cone. And let's say, I mean, I'm sort of. Uh, you could you could go like this. I mean, there are possibilities. But it's just a little bit of an annoyance that the nozzle sort of shapes like that. I guess it's a good indicator, but it has aesthetic displeasing qualities to it. So that's the thing. I thought I had changed uh, this common extensible cryogenic engine in its uh, config, but it turns out uh, that's still a problem. That's alright because we're, we're still going to use it, but we're going to use it in high power mode, and it turns out high power mode seems to be all right at least I, I hope it is all right so uh, with, with all that oh I did install the uh, Bobcat Soviet engines uh, in my 23.5 version I had only uh, put in four of the engines because the full Bobcat Soviet engines uh, pack is so big it's 120 megabytes that I just didn't have enough RAM space now in 64-bit uh, I've I managed to put all of them uh, I, I don't know if I'll be using them or not uh, it'll depend, we'll see. But uh, for now, we're going to continue with a variant on my on my uh, pre-existing rocket, the Magni rocket, uh, with the with similar engines, uh, with the same ones, except I'm going to be using the common extensible cryogenic engine. So let's let's load that up. So basically, for uh, this episode, I wanted to try something new, and uh, thinking about what I could do. Uh, the last big mission I did was to Jupiter, and that failed because of a lack of uh, solar input, uh, not enough solar power. And I still haven't been able to unlock uh, particularly good solar panels or RTGs, so there's no way to fix that very easily, except to make the probe bigger and just to carry a lot more solar panels somehow. Uh, so I decided to go in the opposite direction and head to Mercury. Now. Mercury takes a lot more delta V than it takes to get to Jupiter. So, uh, and it's a little bit finicky uh, in terms of timing. So this is our probe. 
And I think on reconsideration, I thought about... No, I've got a... I, I decided to put a reaction wheel instead of uh, RCS. I guess that's alright. Uh, that'll be better. Uh, we, we really don't have enough room to spare. I've gone with this uh, very interesting design for the for the probe. It has three stages here. This is one stage, this is another stage, this is another stage for approximately 8,000 delta V. Okay, right, so um, yeah, aside from that, it's also got this third stage, which is entirely a boost stage. Um, not entirely, I think I need 500 delta V from it uh, to get us to where we're going. Uh, uh, to orbit, but uh, other than that, it's got about 3,000 that will be used to boost us uh, on our first on the first part of our journey to Mercury transit, and then otherwise. Uh, so this engine is the common extensible cryogenic engine in in high power, which is more or less uh, uh, an RL10 B2. So it's it's not too far off from our RL10 B2. This is a J2. Same as with the Magni, and again, the same as the Magni, one uh, RS-68, yes, RS-68A in the base. However, the Magni 3 has much larger side boosters. We've got uh, two boosters here, each with Aerojet LR-87s. Now, I don't know why... Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we've got those uh, rather large boosters, and in fact, they burn for 2 minutes and 24 seconds, as you can see here. And after they separate, it's only 10 more seconds on the first stage before that separates, and uh, the second stage goes. I've got little uh, little separatrons to help us out with all the separation stuff. One thing I might want to do is up the, the ejection power on this. Not too sure it'll help, but we'll see. Okay, so that is our Mercury probe. So I'm gonna save that. Oh, well, okay, I'm gonna launch it. No, I'm not going to. Nope, nope, I uh, can't launch this yet. I haven't gotten uh, Mercury to the right position. I don't want to leave this on the pad. It says local control by, uh, right now, but once we release the launch clamps, that should be fixed. So let's recover vessel quickly. You know what? We, we're actually not too far off. By my calculations, uh, the transfer phase angle for Mercury is 108 degrees. Uh, hold on, let me double check that. Yes, 108.35 degrees. But that is assuming perfectly circular orbits, which obviously not. Also, uh, the same inclination, which obviously not. Um, so yeah, uh, it is a bad approximation in the case of Mercury in particular, but I don't have a better approximation at hand. I actually have software that could give me a better approximation uh, based on, but I'd have to calculate Julian dates and I hate calculating Julian dates. So let's, let's not do that right now. Um, let's say this is uh, close enough to go. So actually I didn't have to revert the Magni 3 on the launch pad after all. Uh, we can just go for it. Let's try it out. Uh, this will be our first try for Mercury, and you know, if it doesn't work, uh, we'll try again some other time. Now, I have to be clear, we are not going to be trying to get into orbit around Mercury. This is a flyby. So uh, keep that in mind, and we're taking very little instrument instrumentation with us. Only, you know, Gravitron, um, thermometer, that sort of thing. I think that's it. I mean, we don't need a barometer or anything. So very minimal. Uh, so yeah. Let's uh, get on with it. All right, I've already uh, matched inclination with the moon. I still haven't got my uh, MechJab windows set up properly, but uh, we'll just go with orbit info. That's uh, usually good enough for this part. Um, yeah, so uh, throttle up, SAS on, and our first journey to Mercury, very difficult planet to get to. Uh, just getting into a flyby trajectory, trying to get near to it though. That's going to be the tricky part. And yeah, all right, uh, let's get cracking. I swear, I pressed the space bar like six times and it just wouldn't let me release those launch clamps. Anyway, we've got time delay, so that's good. 
gonna have to fix the rest of the probe parts. Sorry it's in the night time but of course that is to match inclinations. I don't have any control. We cannot launch in daytime if if our inclinations demand that we are here in this particular location. But there you go, uh, the Magni 3 mainly modified because of the side boosters but also using the common extensible cryogenic engine instead of the uh, the regular RL-10 B2. Not too sure there's any functional difference. Actually, uh, I think uh, I used the same model in the regular Magni. So, so we're just continuing like that. Oh, uh, what's that sound? Uh, we have a problem. There was an overheating sound just now. We're continuing on here. The engines do not seem to be overheating and there's no other... There's certainly no parachutes on here, so... Don't know what that's about. And... Let's F3 it for a sec. Uh, no errors. Strange. Alright, here we go. Uh, LRB set time, let's see. This is uh, the most dangerous part of the whole thing. We're at uh, maximum G, and here we go. LRB SIP is successful. Very nice. 10 more seconds until first stage out. First stage is out. First stage separation is good. And the second stage is lit. And we continue. Should be clear to attempt to drop the fairings here. Let's see if they eject with enough force. And they don't. I'm going to extend the one critical antenna at this point and perhaps that will knock one of the fairings off. Uh, it doesn't really seem to. Hmm, this is getting pretty dicey here. I think I might have underestimated how much thrust I need at this stage. A second stage burning 8 minutes and 20 seconds is definitely pushing it. I'm not going to uh, bring the pitch back down until I see time to apsis, apoapsis going back up. Still declining here. I think it's stabilized. Just waiting for a tick up. Okay, I'll go to 45 degrees now. If I can. Hello? I am uh, putting in pitch inputs, but it's not responding. I'm gonna attempt to use uh, Smart ASS. This should have gimbling. It's a J2 for heaven's sakes. But we're not moving. 
Why are we not moving? This is probably not good for our, the future of this mission. Ooh, boy. We've got connection. I'm just gonna go through the checklist. Got connection. It's a gimbling engine. At least last time I checked it was. Uh, there is no tweakable gimbal. Um, it's not actually buried by this tank. This It's attached to the tank properly. So uh, just in case that was a worry, it's, that's not a problem. Well, we'll just have to ride it out. I've got Smart ASS trying its best, but... If I recall, the gimbling on the J2s are pretty substantial. I mean, certainly more than the three degrees I normally limit them to. We're going to end up in a pretty high orbit at this rate. We'll have to uh, see what that means for transfer. But we're going to have to burn more of the third stage engine than I would have liked. If we can even get it oriented properly. There is a tiny reaction wheel on the on the probe itself, but that's not enough to turn anything. So this launch is not working quite so well. Strange. I mean, this is just a variant on the Magni launcher. It shouldn't uh, have any problems. But in this version... Now, remember in the previous version I had tweakable gimbal and everything. In this version I don't. And apparently that's having a little bit of a problem with uh, the way I've got the rocket set up. Don't ask me why. Now our heading is even drifting. With this much thrust it should be able to uh, control this, but it's not. Gonna take uh, Smart ASS off and try it myself again. Not really helping. It's as if it's just not able to gimbal. Because uh, with this much thrust, if I'm tilting the rocket like this, it, uh, it should turn the rocket. It really, really should. Okay, let's get rid of this, uh, this uh, problematic stage. Okay, now let's see if we can't uh, tilt things to a better orientation. We can sort of see the fairings sort of flopping off here. Yeah, that's a lot to take out of the third stage just to make orbit. Very unpleasant. Okay. It looks like uh, Smart ASS is bringing us back down, so that's good. All right. Um, right. It's a good sign. Now that gets us uh, close to Mercury's orbit, but not quite there. We also need a a inclination burn around here. Ninety days. I'm surprised it's that long. How long does this stage go for? 11 minutes. I think we should start now. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Somebody likes to gimbal. Not too sure I like the below the horizon, but that's a factor of how long the burn is, so I'm, t I'm just gonna let that go. Okay, so we're we're coming up on our on the end of our burn for orbit, our our really weird burn for orbit uh, after the failure of the J2 to gimbal. But uh, here's another weirdness. Uh, why doesn't it show the fuel for this uh, this engine? 
you know, normally you see the fuels. Is it because it can use more than one fuel? I, I didn't think that was a problem. But it only shows this minor bit of overheat and doesn't show how much fuel is left on this stage over here. So that's another little quirk. Um, I don't know if we're going to get to Mercury on this one, but I do not fault my calculations. I think I think I put enough fuel on this. It was really just uh, that weird J2 problem. And this that was not a problem that we had on any previous version. And uh, certainly, if, if the J2 had any gimbling, we'd see the oscillations that we saw on uh, one of the EDB uh, mission control episodes. Uh, it would oscillate around when it didn't have enough uh, gimbling to control itself. But in this case, it simply did not have any gimbling. It uh, just didn't have any control at all. So, yeah, that's, that's worrisome. I'll have to look at the configs to see what's up with that. How how it could have gotten messed up, I have no idea. I mean, um, in theory, it was just the real engine configs that were included into uh, Realism Overhaul. Remember, in the previous version with 23.5, I had real engines separate from Realism Overhaul because Realism Overhaul didn't have real engines bundled in. In theory, they had it just included uh, the real engine configurations into Realism Overhaul. But uh, already I know that they've made some adjustments to that and uh, realism, the mob maintainers of Realism Overhaul, of course. And uh, apparently the particular modifications in the J2 have uh, not turned out the way I expected. So we'll take a look at that. Okay, so here's Orbit. Our uh, apoapsis is going quite out of control, but I'll wait until my periapsis is good. Okay, that's good enough. Alright, so at least we're in orbit. Let's see how much delta V we have left on this stage. Uh, a 958, not great. Oh, uh, while we're at it, let's see how much we have in total. 9,850. So, uh, as much as it takes to get into orbit around Earth, we still have left. But that's pretty much what we need in order to get to Mercury. Let's plot it. And um, I'll, I'll plot it and uh, come back to you. All right, I have it, uh, except it's, uh, well, good news and bad news, right? Uh, good news, uh, I can get um, the periapsis to 104 kilometers. Uh, as usual, my, uh, my plotting skills are uh, reasonably sharp. But uh, bad news, uh, this maneuver in... Uh, orbit around Earth is going to be 5,153 and then this maneuver is going to be 4,905. That's not beyond what I had expected. Uh, I mean it's uh, 10,000 meters per second altogether which is just 400 more than we've got for the flyby uh, but of course the J2 and that problem. So uh, we happen to be coming up uh, just uh, 400 meters per second short. Of course I haven't unlocked uh, really amazing technologies in terms of propulsion. There are no ion engines or anything like that just yet. Uh, we're still using uh, the engines that we we all know and love like the Estes and the one kilonewton thrusters and so and of course the RL-10 to begin with so yeah we're gonna come up uh, 400 meters per second short but let's uh, give it a go uh, let's see how close we can get I uh, I don't know shall we shall we try for close to the Sun that's another option I'm somewhat satisfied that we at least managed to plot this right and in fact my estimates for how much it would take were correct and uh, the fault on this mission was not mine. Uh, we certainly have enough uh, solar panel power once we get into sunlight I'll show you that. Uh, we will be uh, well powered on this journey in fact even without uh, any power coming in it's got a day and 13 hours left. But uh, yeah, 
Yep, yeah, I, I really want to get some science done, you see. I don't want this uh, journey to be without scientific merit. So we might have to consider that. So, shall we try and get closer to the sun? If we dump this, uh, this uh, plane change maneuver, we might be able to do it. Let's try for close to the sun. It's not a, it's not a big challenge, obviously. I'm even a little bit reluctant to have dropped that maneuver. So let's see, how close can we get? Around there. I don't know. Doesn't seem close enough, honestly. Let's try and aim for Mercury anyway. I don't think we're going to get close enough to the sun on this. I just noticed something. Oh, this is brilliant. Look, 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 look. Ha ah, ha Oh dear. Um, this, this is a very lucky, fortuitous event. If we can get this lined up right. And getting uh, an encounter right at the ascending node, you see. Uh, that, that would save everything. Pure luck, by the way. This is not... Uh, not intentional or normal by any circumstance and it's it's very messy Let's try and get something like this oh yes uh, we'll have to adjust it later on I don't think we can do it from here very easily obviously not a home and transfer and if we were trying to get into orbit around Mercury, this would not be a good thing to do. But we're not trying to get into orbit around Mercury. Any attempt to get into orbit around Mercury would probably take about 10,000 meters per second of delta V to get into, uh, get into the orbit just to slow down. Yeah, I can't adjust it uh, from here. We'll have to do some sort of mid-course burn to to bring it closer, but that's fine. We've got a lot of hypergolics to work with here. So, maybe we'll make it to Mercury after all. Let's let's keep going here. Let's see. Now that's going to take all of these stages plus a little bit of that one. Let's call it a burn time of 15 minutes. So let's uh, start out I'm not uh, calculating this as precisely as I did with the Voyager burns. I could do it that way. But uh, let's say uh, 7 minutes and 30 seconds before the node will start burning. Hopefully that will be close enough. Alright, I'm going to... We've got uh, two LH rockets, uh, really powerful ones, not my usual ones. But uh, we'll see how they work out. And, yeah. Okay. Whoa, this thing always has such a kick to it. I mean, it doesn't have uh, too much... Well, actually, it does have a pretty good thrust weight ratio at this point. Alright, so uh, we continue. Okie dokie. Next. Uh, it's our main probe, which will continue. Though actually it's really this part. Uh, let's extend the solar panels while we're at it. Got that hot keyed. Yes, uh, compared to its size, these solar panels are really quite spectacular. We are not going to be running out of electric charge this time. Sort of like a general always fighting his previous battles, I know, but still. 
Okay, SAS report. Uh, we are currently over Australia, very much so, and and we have reached escape velocity, and we are continuing on. We've got uh, less than half of the burn left to do, but uh, we seem to have started a little bit late, though not too much. If we take a look at our trajectory and intended trajectory, whoa, not that far. You can see that uh, we've got a bit of a correction to do, and hopefully before we get uh, before we get here, let's say, uh, we'll have uh, gotten a little bit closer to our intended trajectory. Right now, we've got uh, unforeseen moon encounter. Now, this is of course a very touchy sort of uh, attempt here getting the encounter right at the ascending node. If we miss it uh, even by a hair's breadth, we, uh, we have to face the fact that our inclination is 6.7 degrees different from that of Mercury. So we, uh, we need to hit this pretty close. We're hugging the, the maneuver node pretty tightly here. But uh, we'll see how it goes, so I'll, I'll update you once we get to the end of this. Okay, that stage is out. Decouple and the one kilonewton thrusters. Here we go. Okay, we're getting very close here. Uh, we are now quite distant from the Earth. Very nice view. And this is what is happening. Still only a 0.2 second delay, so that's not a problem. And we've got throttling on these, and that's it. It's two units per second off. Pretty close. Let me uh, replot and see what I can get. Okay, I've got within 36,000 kilometers, uh, but uh, our node is pretty much immediate, so let's turn, turn, turn. and burn four hundred meters per second is a lot but in the grand scheme of things is much cheaper than the intercept that I had been thinking I would be aiming for so quite fortunate also it has a it has a side benefit in that uh, by the time you get here when you can see that if you divide Earth's orbit up into quadrants uh, it'll be around here right so so actually that'll be pretty good in terms of communication we'll be very close to uh, Mercury at that point ideal for communication so we won't have the huge lag problems that we've had in other missions Mercury, Mercury will actually make a complete orbit in the time that we take to get over there. Okay, that's pretty close. And 40,000 kilometers. Let's see if we can't bring that. Okay, well, no, it's pretty much right there. Okay, so uh, let's plot a mid-course adjustment to see if we can't do any better. Bet, better. Boy, I'm having trouble with words today any better than that okay I think I have it uh, uh, let's see uh, moho periapsis of 406 kilometers 407 really uh, with a 23 meter per second burn in the middle there so let's head to it okay looking good Okay, we've uh, passed the maneuver node somewhat, but it's all right. We're we're using flight computer, and you know how much I I love and respect flight computer's ability to hit these correctly. Anyway, so uh, let's try it out. It's got a two minute delay on it. Let's see. This is the first time using flight computer on the newest version of Remote Tech. Here we go. Ah, uh, pr 
pretty close. 0.8 off. There's no particular reason why there should be any discrepancy between these two, but hey. Alright, so. How close did we get? Hmm, 2,000 kilometers. Not quite there. Okay, 284 kilometers. Even better. Alright, so I think that's good enough to get into the sphere influence of Mercury. Uh, I, I think I will have to be in this view to see when that happens to make sure there's no glitch. So here we go. Pretty constant communication so far. I'm sure we'll have lapses, but uh, now our uh, our satellite system actually has a few more satellites we can communicate with instead of just Pratchett Station and Mission Control. I think that's patched up by our interplanetary communications pretty well. Okay, Mercury's sphere of influence. This is just a flyby. We, uh, we can't really do too much except uh, we can probably get closer to it than just uh, 340 kilometers so perhaps I can try that oh, that's more like it 58 kilometers let's skim the surface real tight not quite that tight okay 27 kilometers we'll go for that burn but first we can do the... Wow, our, our signal delay is quite large. Is Earth not where I thought it would be? No, Earth is uh, pretty much exactly where I thought it would be. Didn't think it would be uh, such a long signal delay, but okay. Alright, so let's uh, do the gravioli detector. On gravity data and I guess we'll have to bring this up to see when that will happen and uh, I don't know if we can get a thermometer reading from this high up but we'll try couldn't really bring a goo container or anything like that because it was too heavy oh darn I passed that maneuver node should have done that first. Not a big problem, but still. Let's uh, give the command to uh, turn to the maneuver. Okay, great. Uh, space high over Mercury, if you will. And we can transmit that data. Hmm, it's doing it piecemeal. Temperature scan can't be done right now. Okay, well, we still got 170 odd science that is trying to upload. Uh, we'll wait for those chunks to head out there. Okay, I'm gonna send the get closer to uh, Mercury maneuver signal now. Um, hopefully, it'll get to that prograde marker in time. And uh, not seconds, but uh, meters per second. Right. I guess we got all the signs. I didn't really pay attention. I was plotting this alternate maneuver. Okay, so I will assume that we got all the gravioli data and we are proceeding to the maneuver. I'm trying to see where Mercury is, but I think we're still too far out to see it clearly.
Okay, uh, 53.5 kilometers. I'm not too sure I'm entirely satisfied with that. Let me add another maneuver uh, past the signal delay. Twenty kilometers sounds good in fourteen minutes. Is it actually turning to the maneuver node? It would seem so. Okay, good. So uh, we'll call it uh, 78 meters per second. And actually, let's call it 77 and execute now. Okay. There's no particular reason why we shouldn't just crash this into the surface, of course, but... But it would be bad form to do so, I suppose. Okay. Very good. Ooh, 3.5 kilometers. Well, that's close. Okay, now we have to uh, do other things. We have to tell it to do the instrumentation. Uh, let's see. Where's the other ones? This one, well, let's just log gravity data. Log temperature data. And how far are we from periapsis? 10 minutes. Should be just about right. And our communication link seems to be going in this direction, which means that Mercury will not be blocking us as we do that. So that's also good. Uh, the only question is whether we're going to hit something right when the data comes in. <laughs> that might be a problem. Yeah, we might actually crash into the surface before we get the data. We'll see. And yeah. Where are you, Mercury? Oh, there it is. There it is. I see it. Just the barest sliver of uh, light from the sun is uh, making an arc there. Okay, good. Oh boy. Okay, well, it's just a matter of how much time we've got left before it uh, scratches the surface or something. It's coming awful close. What's its final trajectory? It'll be boosted back out again. Okay, transmit. <laughs> Let's not delay here. Anytime we uh, spend delaying, we're not gonna get that. Uh, wow, this is going real fast. Uh, oh, what happened to the surface? Uh oh, glitch, glitch, glitch. Uh oh. Okay. So uh, yeah, definitely, definitely need to be above six kilometers. Let's say. Ah, uh, lost sight of the surface. Uh, how does that happen? Okay, anyway, uh, let's call it a semi-successful mission to Mercury. I'm still going to have to figure out what was up with the J2. Yeah, yeah, we know. Crashed into, uh, into uh, the surface. Anyway, yeah, so the key thing is to figure out what happened with the J2. But uh, we managed to get some science out of Mercury nevertheless, so that's a positive. We almost got the temperature scan data 
Um, we didn't really get all of the gravity scan data either. But uh, yeah, yeah, uh, much better than I thought it would go. So, uh, yep, with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.